welcome to this video with a lot of building of one engine and then starting a completely different engine. Welcome back to my garage. I'm not quite sure what this video will be about. You've seen the thumbnail and, uh, and the title, so you know, but as of yet, I'm not sure. Maybe the pip engine, maybe the brute force concept, maybe the dyno build, maybe something else. I've got, got a weird project. My belt is a tiny bit too long. The reason I'm going for twin idlers is because I want this to bend kind of far away from here to make room for an exhaust flange and also to minimize the heat input. Might need to make a shield. So that wouldn't be possible with 
just one because this could possibly hit the other side of the belt. That's why I'm going for two twin rollers. Need to order a, a slightly shorter belt. Look what the cat dragged home. I'll get into my garage clothes and get this into the garage and explain. So here it is, uh, Java Babetta 210. And why did I buy this? It was extremely cheap, that's one point. Well, for the same reason I got this Aprilia RS50. Which I really would like to use for something, a more serious project. I was going to use my Tomos A35 converted NSU quickly, 1957, slightly modified. I pulled the engine, was going to check which parts I needed to replace. I knew the clutches were gone, but I can't find that box of parts. All I can find is the covers. I think I've thrown that box away, which is really unlike me. And uh, I'm still looking because I usually don't throw anything away. I will build something out of this, if I find that box of parts or not, but not now. So plan C, the Java. But what the hell am I talking about here? Do you remember this thing? There's a link in the description to the video where I built it. Well, this is going into the Java. I'll replace the cylinder assembly with this. Not right now though, back to work. The Varing Hone did a beautiful job of uh, honing my cylinder. It was, was a joy to work with compared to my, my old uh, Indian cheap eBay uh, tool. I've clearanced the exhaust port bridge and now I'm going to chamfer all the ports. And, uh, and the cylinder is ready. ATF. This ATF trick is uh, something I've taken from the comments. Several people have uh, have advised me to do it this way, saying that just rinsing it with water and soap doesn't take away all the all the particles after honing. But supposedly the ATF does a very good job of uh, job of sucking. Uh, sucking the crud out of the machining marks or honing marks. can't believe I found that. It's uh, My floor is basically 60% uh, metal chips. It will probably happen again. I don't think we'll need much of a gasket. The squish clearance seems to be pretty much spot on just from looking at it. I'm a little bit concerned with the ring gap which is kind of off center on that exhaust bridge there. That's a design oversight. I should have made the bridge or the, the exhaust port a slightly bit wider and the transfer ports a slight bit narrower had that bridge centered. But I think it should be fine. I guess we'll find out. Could always relocate it to the to the rear. 
so 90 degrees from where it's at now but uh, try as it is first and see see how it behaves 0.66 millimeter squish clearance which is safe I think for this application getting close now. We can assemble the top end and the transfers, the external transfers. We need a shorter belt and I'm waiting for some material to for that idler mechanism for the lower belt. Lots of compression, so the ring is sealing well. That's a good sign. Might be the first time I can see straight through the transfers in a two stroke engine. It's kind of cool. That's as far as I can get today. I need to buy some hose clamps for the external transfers. Need to drill some holes and insert and buy. Buy the nipples first, then drill some holes and insert some nipples in this uh, manifold block between the blower and the crankcase. Pressure slash vacuum takeoff for the, the wastegate blow off valve. And also a coastline from that block to this manifold for the pumper car. And we're waiting for belts and material to mill the, the tensioner and then engine mount and stuff. In the beginning of this video I said I didn't really know what it was going to be about. But I think the main attraction will be starting the PIP engine with the actual intake valve. A longer intake and I 3D printed this adapter to get it at a better angle. And the car wide open all the time. And also I've got a I've got a rebuild kit for the, for that small Volvo. So we'll rebuild that Volvo to be sure and uh, mount up this and see how it runs. If we can get it to run good on the secondary intake. It should probably not be this long for the proper RPM. This might make it easier for us to, to get it into resonance without revving the shit out of it. Okay.
ready to start the engine once again now with a longer secondary intake which should make it get on that secondary intake earlier in the rpm range primary goal today is just to see how it behaves on the intake i've got a modified carb for testing on methanol and nitro though which can fit on this intake so that might happen later but today is just to see how it behaves for further testing we'll need that dyno i'll show you later what i'm working on and just as it mattered the much I forgot to turn on the camera again. I started it and gave it some more fuel up top and it started revving really good on the primary intake. So good in fact that the torque from the engine ripped the frames off the of the stools I'm, I'm resting it on here. Luckily there was not much damage except for the plug cap which uh, took the fall and, uh, and ruptured. I'll replace the plug cap and we'll start it again and this time I'll make sure the camera is on ah, would have been such a great thing to have on camera too the whole thing falling on the floor oh yeah okay camera on I'll turn on the exhaust extraction and uh, we'll start it again like it could rev really good on the secondary intake too. I'm not taking this chance now though, not more testing on this uh, this setup because it's almost it's jumping around on the floor and almost falling over and I'm afraid the engine will just fall, it's just clamped on there. So uh, no more testing until the dyno frame is done, have to prioritize that now. It's promising, really promising. I'll quickly show you what I'm working on for the dyno and uh, then it's goodbye. You saw the big retarder I'm going to use as a load on my dyno in the previous video. That big retarder has a lot of inertia. If something goes wrong, if an engine ceases, that amount of inertia can wreak havoc on parts that will be forced to rotate, even though they're stuck. I'm mounting a clutch to one of the pulleys. So that's the plan. I'm, uh, this is a derby clutch. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to use this one. I have it and it is fairly complete. And uh, shouldn't be that much of a problem to getting it mounted to to a belt pulley. Mount some bearings in that pulley. Chain drive from uh, from from this shaft to the retarder. We'll see. Okay. Thanks for watching. See you next time.